Good morning, Bell Medical. This is Kevin. We're going to talk about respiratory therapy products from Bell Medical, which would include Palmodyne and Trigoneb and laryngoscope blades and handles. So the respiratory therapy department uh, is involved with uh, a CPAP masks, which we're going to talk about from Palmodyne. They're involved with uh, nebulizers, which we're going to talk about our trigger neb product, and then they're often involved with uh, the rapid response team or any kind of resuscitation in the hospital. Thus, they get involved with laryngoscopes, uh, blades, and handles, especially for crash carts. So, to start off with, uh, I'm going to uh, basically show our catalog, uh, and that is uh, the pages that have to do with uh, the Palmodyne product. Palmodyne uh, specializes in two products for us, uh, CPAP mask and the control crike. So uh, the control crike is uh, earlier in the catalog, but when you get to this portion, uh, anesthesia is less interested in this, but these give us three pages that uh, are directly related to uh, anesthesia, excuse me, respiratory therapy. So to start off with, we're going to talk about uh, Palmodyne, which is a U.S. manufacturer of uh, continuous positive airway pressure mask. Uh, I have a video that's going to uh, talk about the different products, but uh, initially I'm going to show you this is what we call a full face mask, uh, and it can have a removable uh, uh, elbow that the elbow can do different functions on different machines. You can have it on a ventilator, on a dedicated CPAP mask, and the, ven the, the elbow can be removable or fixed. Full face goes over the mouth and the nose, so that's what a full face is. Uh, it has this uh, silicone uh, pad for your, uh, uh, that we'll talk about for your forehead and for positioning. And then we have a device called the Max Shield, which goes over the eyes and the mouth and the nose. So this would be Max. Kind of looks like a fire department uh, uh, shield. And believe it or not, that actually gives a patient sometimes more visibility of uh, televisions and, and family members than the full face, which has, uh, you know, a device kind of over it or between it. But those are the, the main devices. They also have a nasal uh, mask that you can use. Uh, so to, uh, what I'm going to do is switch us to a four-minute video that kind of describes the Palmodyne products, uh, I believe, in a, in a, uh, a, a well-done way. So... I'm going to try to share my screen here, so hopefully you can see uh, this video. Um, and it's about four minutes long. This is our non-invasive ventilation mask line. It has many characteristics that outweigh the competition. The first thing is that everything is made of silicone, including the forehead piece. Some of our competition has a foam forehead piece, which is fine in the beginning, but eventually the patient's going to sweat. Foam gets sweaty, gross, can't really clean it. This can cause skin breakdown on the forehead. Ours you can wipe clean. Our forehead piece also adjusts more than any other mask on the market. We have a unique feature called the Omni Clip. When you squeeze it, it can adjust both up, down, and in and out. Some of our competition does have a adjustable forehead piece. However, it only adjusts on a crescent shape. That's good and great. However, if you want to get the forehead piece in this position or in this position to alleviate pressure on the bridge of the nose, you cannot do it. We have a dual lip cushion as well. Uh, it allows the mask to float on the patient's face. Our clipping mechanism is easier to use in the competition. Simply twist. It'll snap off and secure it into place. Some of the competition has a ball and socket type mechanism, which is very difficult uh, for the staff to secure into the mask. Uh, for no upcharge, you can also adjust the clips to the proper position, remove them, and tilt the mask up 90 degrees on the patient's face. This allows you to have the patient take a glass of water, it gives some meds, et cetera. And it also causes less of a need for your RT staff to go down and resize the mask every single time that the patient wants to take a drink of water. Uh, nursing staff could do this, for instance. We also have interchangeable elbows. Uh, the reason for interchangeable elbows is the majority of the time, 
a uh, patient uses this mask on either a Vision or B60, a bi-level machine. Uh, in that case, you would use a clear anti-asphyxia elbow. When you open up the mask, this will be packaged in a clear little plastic baggie. Simply remove it, take it, the friction fit, push it as far as you can into the mask. It has an official shelf, so it does have a stopping point. No other mask manufacturer has a stopping point for interchangeable elbows. So this makes sure that you have a secure fit. Elbows are not going to pop out if you don't push it in far enough, or you're not going to have a very difficult time removing it um, if you push it in too far. So I take it, push it until this elbow and the fitting is flush, and you're good to go. Use a blue elbow for um, whenever you want to use this on a standard ventilator with a dual lens circuit. Um, and again, have the mask package with a clear anti-asphyxia elbow. Have a little box of 10 of these sitting on your shelf. Uh, it saves shelf space, time. The mask can follow a patient to different machines. Uh, if they're on a B60 and you want to switch them over to a ventilator, you can simply do an elbow swap. This is our Max Shield line. Uh, it's getting very popular in the US. Reason being, it helps alleviate skin breakdown, especially on the patient's uh, bridge of the nose. Uh, nowadays, uh, facilities are putting patients on uh, non-invasive ventilation, bi-level ventilation for much longer periods of time. So if you have a patient with a mask on their face for, say, five days, that patient's very sick, their skin is going to get red, especially on the bridge of the nose, it's the way the body reacts. So what you do is you use this as an alternating strategy, and it Give the skin a chance to rest. Okay, so that was uh, the Palmadine uh, video. Let's see if I can do this again. Stop sharing. Okay, so hopefully now you can see me again. And, and once again, we talked about a full face mask and the Max Shield. Now, and the different elbows, do you need to know any of that? Uh, eventually, yeah, but the real question you need to ask when you go to a respiratory therapy department is would they like to save 10 to 20% or more on their CPAP mask? Uh, and you ask what CPAP mask are you using now and uh, you know, are you happy with it? You know, and they're usually pretty happy with their CPAP mask, but the, I guess the main thing to ask is what CPAP mask are they using now? You might also ask, are they using uh, interchangeable elbows on their mask? Because that tells you that they're moving a patient from one machine to another machine. Um, but the key question is, would they like to save 10 to 20% on their CPAP mask? And if they say no, then they're not really a, a customer anyway. Uh, but if they say, yeah, maybe, uh, depends what you have, then you'd say, may I get you some samples of our CPAP mask. But you have to identify what they're using now. So make sure you uh, uh, take pictures, maybe write down product numbers of their current CPAP mask. Uh, ask what they do when they get uh, a patient with some kind of, uh, um, how should I say, uh, it's okay, Dave. Yeah. Oh, you got one? Oh, good. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. So, so basically, like we talked about, is, is identify what they're using now and ask if they'd like to save 10 or 20 percent. And, uh, and the pricing that we have in here is good pricing, but we can always get more aggressive. We also have Premier Contract for Palmadine. So this is one of the few product lines that we have a Premier or a GPO contract. So if you have a Premier facility, you definitely want to call on their respiratory therapy department and ask them if they'd be interested in evaluating our CPAP mask. And once again, the key thing is to verify what are they using now, get the product numbers, uh, and get that information to us. We'll get with Logan Skelly, our Pulmonine rep, and he'll help develop a strategy on what to do and what samples to take to them. Okay? Uh, now we're going to try something different. Let's see. Um, now we're going to talk about another Pulmodyne device called the Control Crike. And I have a video of an actual crike on a cadaver. Uh, and then we're going to talk briefly about the Control Crike. But the Control Crike competes with Cook. And uh, Cook 
uh, basically charges like 400 and something dollars for a crike that has a two-year shelf life, and we charge $200 for a kind of crike that has a five-year shelf life. So, uh, and ours is easier to uh, and safer to use. So, I'm going to try to share with you a. Let's see. Uh, I guess my question is, can you see the palmodyne in front of you? Hopefully, you can. This is a two-minute video. Okay, I'm using my non-dominant hand to peel the hyoid. Here's the prominent thyroid notch. My first third digit goes to the wide lamina of the thyroid. My finger comes down to the depression of the cricothyroid membrane. Here's the cricoid cartilage. I'm stabilizing my dominant hand onto the sternum with the cric knife and the preloaded uh, hook. And because this landmark is so evident, the cricothyroid membrane is so evident, I'm not going to make a vertical incision. Instead, we're going to go horizontally through the cricothyroid membrane with a single stab. And as we come through, and we go side to side, I'm then sliding the hook down. I'm going to feel a pop as we get into the cricothyroid, uh, beneath the thyroid cartilage. I'm lifting up. I now have control over the trachea. I can widen the incision if need be. If the incision is wide enough to accept my cric key, which I'm inserting like so, I come up and down and I feel the tracheal rings, push the cric key in, take this out, and pull the introducer. Back on you. Okay, uh, that was the control crike. Uh, they come, let me see if I can see that better. Uh, they come basically in a, a package about the size of a pencil case. Uh, and we have both trainers, which are, I think, about $120 each, and then the actual uh, control crike, which is uh, $200 each. And, and they literally come in, a, in a, a package that you roll out that says one, two, three, and gives you a relatively easy uh, uh, ability to show someone the, the three steps or, or the three basic steps to doing a, a cricothyroidomy with the control crike from Bell Medical and from Pomodyne. So those are two devices uh, that respiratory therapy would find interesting or anybody would find interesting that is part of a rapid response team or a resuscitation team in a hospital. So you've shown, you've gone into the respiratory therapy department, you've talked to them about CPAP and you've asked them questions about CPAP, you maybe have mentioned the control crike, uh, then you might now mention the uh, nebulizer, uh, and we have a, a unique nebulizer called the trigger neb. So we'll just go straight to the trigger neb and what it all looks like. I like showing the trigger neb in a, uh, a Ziploc bag that has everything uh, included with it. And basically what the trigger neb is, is a, it's a nebulizer with a trigger. Uh, so basically you would connect your oxygen to this, you'd put your medicine or fluid. If you want to just demonstrate this, you can literally put just put uh, a little bit of water in it and connect the other end to uh, an oxygen flow meter and dial it up to like three liters of flow. Uh, one of the unique things about the trigger neb is it also has a filter capability. Right now, a lot of the times they're using a uh, what they call an acorn neb or 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 even a, a more involved neb would be from uh, one of our competitors such as. Uh, 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 Monaham, where the, uh, they, they have something called the Air Eclipse uh, uh, Breath Actuated Nebulizer, whereas the Trigger Neb is actually a Trigger Activated Nebulizer. So basically, I connect the oxygen. I have the option of connecting a very inexpensive filter. And now I can connect a mouthpiece, which would also be uh, included. And I can basically uh, press the trigger and inhale my medication, release the trigger, and now no medication or no flow is going to come out. 
once again press the trigger, inhale, and go from there. I can also take the uh, mouthpiece off and I can attach a uh, face mask. So now I can basically put a face mask up, pull the trigger, and take a breath and release the trigger and take it away from my mouth. Usually when you're using a face mask, you might go into continuous mode. This can go into continuous mode by pulling the trigger and then pushing this up, and now it's going to stay in a, uh, in a uh, or actually pushing it down, will stay in a uh, release mode. So now it's going to be releasing medication continuously. This trigger nev is one of the fastest uh, nebulizers uh, on the market and will do a trigger, uh, do a uh, medication in less than three minutes in continuous mode. When you're not in continuous mode, it's going to be a little bit longer, but it still can be within less than five minutes. Some nebulizers take 10 minutes to deliver a treatment. So the trigger nev basically has the advantage of doing fast treatments. It has the ability of uh, uh, being able to press the trigger and deliver uh, the medication, release the trigger if the patient needs a break, and then press it again and they're taking treatments again, whether they use a mouthpiece or a, uh, a breathing mask. And once again, the, tr the uh, filter option is nice because it prevents the therapist from also inhaling the medication. So that's the trigger nev. And and basically, it competes with a, a product called the Breath Actuated Nebulizer from uh, Monahan. Uh, so the question you would ask a respiratory therapist, are you using any advanced nebulizers uh, or high-performance nebulizers? You could even ask them, are you using the Monahan band? And if they are, they're paying 5 to $6 for the Monahan. And it is a breath-actuated nebulizer. So basically, it's similar to ours in a way that it's not releasing medication right now until they actually take a breath and inhale it. And they have to inhale a certain degree or develop a certain degree of force, and then it releases the medication. Uh, whereas ours, we have no uh, effort needed. As soon as I press the trigger, it's going to start delivering the medication. So it's very easy for me to inhale my medication, release it, and stop the medication being delivered. So breath actuated versus a trigger. Uh, we believe the trigger is easier to use and requires less effort from the patient. The Monahan uh, also is $5 plus, and we're at $1.50 each, uh, so we're significantly less. Some of the nebulizers out there are in the $0.80, cent, $0.90 cent range, but they are low-performance uh, nebulizers. They're not in the league of the Monahan band or the trigger neb from Bell Medical. Okay, uh, So that's the trigger neb from Bell Medical, and once again, the filter. Uh, the uh, ability to stop and start treatments or go into continuous modes are all benefits of the trigger neb. And the question you would ask your current uh, respiratory therapist, are you using any uh, high-performance nebulizers, possibly in the emergency department? The emergency department is probably the best place to also show this other than respiratory because the emergency department gets patients in that are in fits of asthma, and they need to have a nebulized treatment right away, and this device uh, gives them that uh, capability. Now, one of the things that uh, nebulizers are measured on, they're measured on performance such as things such as particle size, and we are uh, we match very well with the Monahan uh, AeroClips, the breath actuated nebulizer. They're at 2.8, and we're actually less particle size at 2.07. The average treatment time, we're at three minutes. They're at five minutes. Uh, the, uh, one of the other things that they, they look at is respira respirable fraction, and we're at 77%. They're at 78%. Uh, you basically show this uh, uh, information to a, a, a respiratory therapist, and they basically know all these things, such as total respiratory respirable dose, uh, we're at 818, uh, and they're at 791, so we're actually better there. And total output rate, uh, in uh, we're at 1,058, they're at 1,009. And environmental loss, in other words, what medicine is lost into the environment, we're both at about 4%. Once again, because we're not continuous. We can control our device, and they can control theirs, the Monahan, to be continuous, but we are intermittent by pressing the trigger and releasing the trigger. Okay, so that kind of tells you a little bit about the nebulizer, a little bit about CPAP, a little bit about a control crack, 
And now one other area that you're familiar with is laryngoscopes, but that's a, a key thing to be talking about at a uh, respiratory therapy because, once again, they're involved in the, um, how should I say, uh, the rapid response team. So whenever there's a code, somebody from respiratory will be going to that code. They might grab a code bag and that would have uh, laryngoscopes in it or even a video laryngoscope. They would also be involved with crash carts. So the OR and anesthesia is all making decisions on what laryngoscope they're going to use routinely for intubation, but respiratory and other uh, ICU and ED are usually involved in what's going to go in the crash cart. So they're important people to talk to and, and make sure they're aware of our combination device. This is what we often put into a crash cart, either a Miller or, in this case, a Mac blade. And that's basically uh, another question you need to ask. Are, you would ask the respiratory therapist, are you involved with uh, stocking crash carts and making decisions on laryngoscope blades? Uh, and if they say no, then say who is involved with the crash cart and who is part of the crash cart committee that would make those kind of decisions. Find out that information and those are the people you want to show our uh, Carnegie laryngoscope blades to. So that uh, in a way is, is an introduction to the respiratory therapy call. Once again, the key thing when you go in is to ask them what are they using now for CPAP and uh, how are they using it. Uh, and then you would also ask what are they using for a nebulizer and are they using any high performance nebulizers and identify what kind of CPAP mask, what kind of nebulizers they're using. And then finally uh, ask it, uh, if they are involved in the crash carts and the laryngoscope blades that would be associated with a crash cart or a code bag, for example. Uh, that's basically our respiratory therapy call at this time. They would also be interested in insight and video laryngoscope. So uh, once again, they're involved in intubation, so uh, that would be another product you would show them uh, our video laryngoscope from insight. So I'll open it up to questions. Uh, is there anybody that has any specific questions? Uh, uh, the respiratory therapy call uh, from Bell Medical. Hey, Kevin. This yes, sir. Can you, uh, you mentioned on the trigger neb, you, I think you said $1.50 was the cost on that, and I think it's $3. Oh, thank you. So the Monaghan breath actuated nebulizers is 5 plus, and, and we are $3. I, I apologize. Thank you, Jerry. Hey, Jerry, would you take a moment to talk about your experience with the either the nebulizer or the, the CPAP mask? Generally, they've been positively received. Am I correct? Yes. Um, however, the trigger neb, getting that uh, to a conversion point is very difficult. Um, there are contracts involved with that, IDNs, GPOs, and uh, but if you can get somebody interested in it, um, the trigger neb is, is fine. Uh, it's a good product. What I tell people is, uh, because a lot of times I'll ask them what their protocol is for aerosol therapy, and they will say, well, we do back-to-back -back treatments. And uh, what that means is it doesn't work, and so they have to keep giving it back to back and sometimes back to back to back. But uh, if you can get them to uh, trial it, uh, you, you've got the battle won at that point because of the cost difference. And I, I tell them on the uh, RTS Road to Success document, it lists all of the uh, testing uh, components and, and how we fare versus not only the band nebulizer but also the Salter uh, Nebutech. And I, I tell them, hey, you have got the ability to deliver more medication in a faster time and in an optimum range of particle size, which means it's getting down into the lungs. It's not so big like a basketball that it's just hitting their tonsils and washing out their throat, and it's not so small that they inhale and turn right around and exhale it. So it's an optimum particle size, and uh, the treatment time is quicker. The uh, respirable fraction, not exactly sure what that means, and 
uh, out, outside of, uh, well, that, that's kind of particle size as well. How much deposition, how much of the medication is getting into the lungs? And that that's kind of goes along with the uh, next one, total respirable dose. Uh, because of the optimum of particle size and everything, you're going to get more medication down into the alveoli where the it's needed and in a quicker time. So um, the band nebulizer is very comparable to ours. I also asked them if they are aware of how much inspiratory effort, how much sucking on that band do they have to do in order to activate it. And uh, I think even in their literature, it's like uh, 15 centimeters of pressure. Well, that's, that's pretty good if you're healthy, but if you're uh, struggling to take a breath with asthma, that, that's going to have some effect in there, whereas you just pull the trigger on ours. I've had people say I have a lot of older, elderly, geriatric patients. They cannot coordinate pulling the trigger and taking a breath, and uh, that's when I tell them, put them on a mask, lock it in it um, for continuous aerosol, and you don't have to worry about that. So if, if you can get a therapist to sit down and really look at this, um, you've got a pretty good shot at this product. I like the question, do you ever have to do back-to-back -back therapies? Uh, because that tells them if they do, they're using a nebulizer that isn't very efficient. Uh, my guess is if they're using a Monaghan, there's probably less frequency of having to do back-to-back. -back. Uh, so one of the things we're shooting for is, is basically we have a nebulizer that's significantly less than the Monaghan, yet performs uh, equal or better. Uh, and it's priced in the range of a, uh, a, a, a regular nebulizer. So uh, thank you, Jerry. Those are great questions. I, I love the back-to-back -back treatment uh, and the, the uh, benefits of the trigger neb. Um, and I think Jerry's actually had good experience with the CPAP mask also. I guess the key thing to be aware of with respiratory is we need to identify what they're using again and, and then develop a strategy. Respiratory is, is uh, I, I'm going to say, uh, uh, classical, not making changes. They don't want to, uh, they don't, if, if they don't make any changes, there's little risk that they can lose their job, for example. But you'll come across some respiratory therapy people that are interested in newer technology and, and they read the papers and they would be interested in, in uh, having success with the trigger nav or with our palmodyne CPAP mask. Uh, Jerry, can you think of any questions you would ask uh, a customer that has, uh, that's using, let's say, Philips or somebody else's CPAP mask? Well, I always start off with what are you using now, and um, probably the majority of the business out there is Respironics or the Philips people. And uh, there's a lot of that on contract. So, um, but I, I just, I, I talk about the fact, I tell the story of how uh, our competitor, Trianum, sold the uh, Respironics mask. They were afraid they were going to lose that. So they went to Pulmodyne and asked them to make them a mask. And they said, we know all the positives about Respironics, and we know about the negatives. So let's uh, redevelop one without the negatives. And that's what Monaghan did. And That's uh, what Palmodyne did. Yeah. What did I say, Trianum? I don't know. Yeah, anyway, said... um, so then Respironics comes back to Trianum and said, no, 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 you get to keep it. So they told uh, Palmodyne, thanks, no thanks. And that's why we now have it. Uh, and what what they have done is they have eliminated a lot of the negative issues with the Respironics mask and uh, have improved on the good things that Respironics had. So I think uh, quality-wise, you do not have to take a step backwards with the Pulmodyne mask. And... They want business, and they are willing to offer some special pricing. As Kevin mentioned, we have the uh, uh, 
contract with uh, who is it, Kevin? Premier. Premier. And um, I, I have an account that uh, I offered them the Premier pricing, and the, the purchasing lady said, uh, "No, you're still a little bit higher than somebody else." And uh, so somehow Bob Bernie got involved, and he offered them tier three pricing uh, at, at uh, 199 dollars or 19 bucks, well, almost 20 bucks a piece. And that just blew uh, Respironics out of the water. I think they were like at $24. So um, pricing can definitely be an advantage for you. And and talk to Kevin and talk to uh, Logan Skelly and and just tell them what's going on. But but sit down and talk to your customer. Find out what they do like, what they don't like, because there's always something that they don't like about Respironics. And I have found that the forehead piece, theirs is foam, ours is silicone. The adjustability of that forehead piece is really good. And particularly now, they have improved on the straps and the uh, snap mechanism because before, yeah, it would snap, but the least little pull, and it popped right off. So there was issues with sealing. In the middle of the night, the patient would hit that, knock the mask off. It would, you know, become un- unhooked, and then they had problems. But with this new clip that they have put on these, it, it's really good. And uh, I've got people who before were not interested that are now saying, yeah, I think I will relook at that. So if you've got pulmonine in your area, talk to these therapists. Thank you, Jerry. I appreciate it. Does anybody else have any specific questions? I, I know we've just given a brief overview uh, of the subject. Uh, the key thing is asking respiratory what they're using now and then getting back to us and we'll develop a strategy. Uh, but is there any other questions that I might be able to try to uh, get information to you on? Okay, well, thank you, everyone. Thanks uh, for coming on and listening. Uh, Hopefully, I will also send those video links out so you can watch the videos directly in case there was any kind of delay. Uh, So we'll send out that information on Pulmonine, TriggerNev, and the videos. Everybody have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye-bye.